another perfect day here in Arizona, blue skies from edge to edge. Another great day to build a renegade telescope. Hi, I'm Gordon Waite at Waite Research. My company makes telescopes, big telescopes. They're called renegade telescopes. They average about 18 inches for the size of the primary mirror. And uh, they range though from a small of maybe 10 inch to a big one that might be 30 inches in diameter. These are Newtonian reflectors, so they stand pretty tall. Most of them are in the five or six foot range. So there's a lot of work that goes into one of these scopes. Now most of the bodies are built out of Baltic birch plywood. Now that means a lot of woodworking, obviously. And to be honest with you, I love woodworking. I like almost everything about it. I like doing the CAD work and the, and the uh, design. I like doing the CNC routing to build the bodies, cut, cut out the parts. I even like dyeing the wood, doing the staining and the finishing. But the one thing that I don't care for is sanding. I don't know of many people that do like sanding, but there's a lot of sanding on a Renegade telescope. In order to try to help me fix that problem, make the work a little easier, and make my company more efficient, I built this machine. This is Gordon Waite's drum sander. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how I built it and how I use it every day to build those Renegade telescopes. The motor in here is a little half horsepower 1800 RPM motor and it just runs on normal 110 house current. Uh, I just had it laying around so it's the motor I used as the core of this project. I mounted the motor on this motor plate and it has hinges at the back so it can go up and down and that's what actually puts the tension on it. So uh, you just lift it up to slip the belt on, let it down and the weight of the motor provides the tension on the belt. Now you can see that the top of the sander isn't built level. It's uh, uphill on the right hand side. Now normally I feed in from the right side and that little bit of slope gives me a little extra advantage when I'm feeding material down over the drum. The top opens up. You can just grab hold of this corner and see the inside. Now there's the drum. The drum is made out of uh, cylinders that I cut on the CNC machine and then glued together over the shaft. The shaft runs on two pillow blocks, pillow block bearings here, one on either end. The sandpaper is held onto the machine with hook and loop fastening uh, and it's very easy and fast to change it. I put uh, the hook and loop material onto the drum first and then you can just peel this off in order to change the grade. I did put a, a floor in this compartment here to catch the sawdust, so as the drum rotates towards you the sawdust almost all comes down into the cabinet. It's really cool. Uh, not much sawdust gets out at all. So it's all collected up in here and about once a year I have to clean this thing out and, uh, and get rid of that sawdust. But it's very well contained and uh, doesn't provide much of a problem. On the design of the top, one of the important parts was that you don't want the top to sag. So I put this uh, member in here at 90 degree angles to the top. It's pretty wide. It's over three inches wide there and that helps to keep the top absolutely straight so that there's no sag and that way I can do a good job of doing flat sanding. I just use an electrical strip that I have screwed onto the wall of the sander for uh, electrical supply. It plugs into the wall and then the uh, motor itself plugs into this strip. See the motors in here and underneath out of the way. On the sander you need to adjust the lid so that the actual peak of the sanding drum here is just slightly underneath the flush level. What happens is, as the motor turns around at high speed, the sandpaper is actually thrust up and out due to the force of turning. And that's what puts it in contact with the material that you're actually sanding. So when it's not in operation, you can actually lay something flat on this and it won't make contact with that drum at all. Now in order to adjust that height exactly, inside here, I have three little screws. Uh, just a screw here, one in the middle, and one here at the edge. And you can see they're just along the, the leading edge here of the drum sander. And you just make a slight adjustment on those, just literally a quarter turn one way or another, in order to adjust the height of this hinged top to get exactly the right, uh, exactly the right positioning of the, of the head of the drum sander. The deck of the sander is attached with uh, two hinges. And those hinges allow me to lift up from the front and uh, lift that deck out of the way. That lets me change the sandpaper or make adjustments to the height. 
Now when I lift this lid up, it actually will stay in place there. And uh, with that lid up, the sander actually takes very little space. Uh, you can see with the lid up, I can uh, put it up against a wall and it only takes about two foot of space, whereas with the lid down, it's about uh, three foot wide or a little more, three and a half feet wide. So uh, for storage, I can put, roll it up against a wall and, it, and it's uh, pretty efficient that way. Now the drum itself rides in two pillow block bearings, one at each end. And on this one, if I get down there low, you might be able to see the red color of the link belt. Uh, but the, the motor comes up on this side, the link belt comes around a pulley here and provides power to the, to the uh, drum. Now the drum was cut on a CNC machine out of uh, little wheels like this. They were real quick to cut on the CNC machine. You can see they have a 5 8 inch center hole which matches the size of the stainless steel uh, shaft that goes through the drum. And then I just set the diameter of the part to be about uh, three, three and a half inches, whatever was convenient. Uh, if you make them too big, then it takes a lot of sandpaper to go around it. So something on the order of uh, three or three and a half inches was a good size for me. Now, I had this stainless steel shaft that runs all the way through. And basically I just uh, fit those uh, round pieces onto the shaft, just slid them on. And then I put a few drops of glue in between them so uh, you know they would stick together just a little bit. Uh, they don't have to be firmly stuck together, just a few drops of glue is enough. And they really don't need to be attached to the shaft itself. There's not that much stress on the drum and uh, I've never had any problem with the drum itself uh, with the pieces pulling away or becoming loose. It's on there good and tight. Well the drum sander is just a joy to use. I do a lot of larger pieces for the telescopes. Something of this size is pretty typical. And you can see this is why I designed this thing with a 32 inch drum. To sand a piece like this on anything smaller wouldn't be a good deal. So I'll show you how I do the sanding on this one. You can see first of all that when the sander isn't running this doesn't actually touch the sandpaper. It's just barely on top of it. So you can see the drum doesn't move at all when uh, I move it across there. But as soon as I turn it on and start sanding this expands up due to the force pushing it out and that's what causes the sanding action to begin. Now one thing that I really love the drum sander for are odd pieces. Now this is a part of a mirror surround on a Renegade and you can see it's a interesting design here. But this will work on the sander just fine. I'll show you. beautiful part about the drum sander is that it only takes two or three passes over it and you have a, a really good sanding job, especially on Baltic birch plywood. Baltic birch is pretty smooth in the first place and the drum sander makes fast work of it. Now doing the edge of this by hand would be a pain because you'd want to go in the direction of the grain. So uh, on the edge it's, it's not so bad when you're stroking like this, but when you get on the front and back you're doing these strokes and it's really easy for a hand sander to uh, you know, tilt forward and backward. So with the drum sander, I know I always get a flat surface in the end, and that's the quality that I want. While this sander isn't particularly dangerous as woodworking machines go, uh, some people don't like to get their fingers too close to the drum. Uh, if you had coarse abrasive in there, and you were to touch the, the machine and have a finger like buckle down inside there, you could get a pretty bad burn or cut from it. So uh, when we're doing pieces, we decided to make a little pusher. Basically this pusher is just a piece of uh, Baltic birch plywood and it has two pegs stuck in the end 
that are a little shorter than Baltic birch plywood is thick. So we use this as a pusher. And we can just put that on there and then push the piece through. You can easily see that the drum sander is far, sand, uh, far faster than using like a palm sander or anything like that. It really saves a tremendous amount of time. Plus it gives us a really nice level flat sand on any part that we put through it. I buy my sandpaper for the drum sander in long rolls. And uh, I buy actually very long rolls. And then I cut them myself to the right size. Uh, after you've made the first one, you can just use the next one as a template. So it's uh, very easy to cut them. Uh, these come, they're about, I don't know, three, three and a half inches wide. Uh, this is a 220, this is an 80, and I think there's probably a 120 on the machine right now. Let me show you what it takes to change the sandpaper on here. Basically, I just lift the lid, and the first step is to take off the old sandpaper. So I just find the end, grab it, pull it away, and it just strips right off. I just make a loose uh, roll. Now for the new roll, you'll notice that the uh, edges are start with a cut here on the end. Uh, so it's cut into a triangle shape. And uh, basically I just used the previous one for a template to make the new one, uh, although it's really easy. Uh, basically, to do the first one, you just put a piece on here with the uh, right-hand edge along the, the thing, and then you just roll it up and then mark where it, it overlaps, and then uh, just make the cut from, from one end to the other on the overlap. That's how you set it up. But to, to put on the new roll, basically you just get it started on here square, and then I uh, keep it in my... I'll try to roll this up. I keep it in my left hand and put some tension on it as I turn the drum with my right hand. And then once you get started, you want to stay pretty tight here. You don't want any gaps to be in here, but you don't want any overlap either. So basically, you just roll it on like this. It's a little easier if I don't have the sandpaper actually inside the machine like this. I would normally keep it outside here. Originally, I thought about making uh, separate drums for each kind of sandpaper to avoid having to change it. But I really couldn't come up with an efficient way to get the drum in and out of the uh, bearing box. So uh, when I went to experiment with it and actually use it, it turns out that putting on the new paper isn't all that uh, obnoxious a task. So uh, I'm perfectly happy to, to uh, change the rolls like this by hand. Now this isn't really an exact job. They don't have to be on there perfect. They could be a little looser if, if, if that's the way they come out. But the better you do here at, at the end, uh, it'll come out right on the roll. And as I finish it up here, you've done your job right. It finishes up at the end of the at the end of the the uh, cylinder itself. Uh, one thing you'll notice, like on the ends of this, is I cut these off. I truncate it instead of having it go all the way out there. What I found uh, while I was using it is that that little teeny strip. Uh, is too small to adhere to the uh, hook and loop fastener. And what would happen would be it would uh, come loose and then come out, and the drum's rolling in this direction, the top toward me. So over here on this end, if this comes up like this and the sander's down like so, it can come over the top here. And then that's the most amazing thing in the world because if this machine's running at 1800 RPMs, that thing strips off and just throws itself across the room. Uh, I had it happen exactly one time. Uh, after that, I cut these things square, and I've never had the problem again. But it, it was an exciting day. <laughs> so anyway, that's how you put a new piece of sandpaper on the drum. Now, I've used this sandpaper for a long time. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is an original piece of sandpaper, so it's been on here probably uh, six or eight months at least. Uh, so the sandpaper doesn't wear all that much. Uh, the wear is pretty evenly distributed, and as I'm using the machine, if I'm doing smaller parts than I showed you, then I will try to do some on the left and some on the right and some on the center to even out the wear on the drum. 
but sandpaper isn't all that expensive and it lasts a long time, so it's an economical machine to run. I certainly buy less sandpaper and pay less for my sandpaper on this machine than I do, for example, on my palm sander. Now I'm going to show you the one thing that I love most about this sander. I've got a normal piece of Baltic birch here, and I've got number 80 paper on here, so that's a, as aggressive as I normally use. I'm going to real quickly make 10 passes on this piece over the sander. Okay, that was 10 passes over the drum sander, and uh, I now have a really nice number 80 finish on the back of this thing. But the thing I just love is, on my tabletop here, there was no sand, sanding dust at all on this side, not a bit. And on this side, there's just a tiny little bit. You can see that that's all that's on this side, uh, just a tiny little bit of sanding dust. Now, if you would have done 10 sandings of that piece with the normal hand sander, you'd have have uh, sawdust everywhere. I just push it over the edge like so, and the next time I turn it around, turn it on, it'll go down inside the machine. So the machine is ex exceedingly clean to use. None of this sanding dust, none of the sawdust gets up in the air, so you're not coughing and, and worrying about inhaling this stuff. So the drum sander is just a joy to use because it's clean and it is so fast, it's just unbelievable. Of all the tools that I've made for my shop, this is one that I really appreciate the most. It saves me a ton of time. It's a nice, safe machine to use, and I just love it.